This is Pastor Mike Hoggart, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. We have WikiLeaks, we have Barack Obama, we have UFOs, and all kinds of stuff to deal with. This caught my attention this week, and, and I want us to just think about this for a minute. Leaked cable reveals Obama sent to 2012 Alice Bunker due to Norway spiral. Now, I don't know if you remember this. We talked about this, and I, at the time, I didn't know what this was. I still don't know what it is. Bunch of spirals and lights in the sky, and somebody, which, let me, let me, somebody suggested to me that it was a NASA project called Blue Beam. Um, I have somebody, one of our watchers, working on this right now, and I need your help. I haven't found any evidence that NASA Project Blue Beam even exists, other than one source from some French uh, book writer who says there was a Project Blue Beam. Other than that, I find no reference to it whatsoever. Maybe you can help me out, help me watch things uh, that are going on. If NASA is doing some sort of project called Blue Beam, man, I want to be right on it. So far, I haven't found out anything. Okay, Conspiracy theory, conspiracy fact. I'd rather have facts in my hand. <clears throat> but here is something that is, is sort of interesting here, and you don't get a whole lot from the, uh, from the headline here. Leaked cable, that's WikiLeaks, reveals Obama sent to, quote, 2012 Alice Bunker. Now, apparently, and I don't know how true this is, apparently one of these WikiLeaks documents comes out and says that when these lights, when this light show went off in, uh, in Norway, this big spiral, that they took Barack H. Obama, uh, the Secret Service or the NSA or somebody got to him and said, we need to sequester the president. They took him to what is referenced as the 2012 Alice Bunker. Now, stop right here. The 2012 Bunker. Is there something going on in Washington, D.C.? Probably so. Um, that they have been and are now making some sort of preparations for something that might happen in the year 2012. According to this, it looks like they are. They call it the Alice Bunker. Now that's, that's interesting to me. Because when I, now I'm, I'm just guessing here. This is conspiracy theory. I'm just guessing here, but I think this is named after um, Alice in Wonderland. Now, if you don't know anything about Alice in Wonderland and how it relates to spiritual entities. Let me kind of explain it just a little bit here. Alice in Wonderland, Alice's Adventures in the Looking Glass and so on, they were written by a British novelist by the name of Lewis Carroll. Actually, Lewis Carroll was not his real name. He was a British mathematician and in Alice in the Wonderland, he was theorizing on what it would be like to go into, are you ready for this, to go into the fourth dimension. Remember, um, from our Bible study on the King James Code, when we're dealing with the number four, the Bible's teaching us by way of the number four about a spiritual realm that is beyond the realm, the three-dimensional realm that you and I live in right now. The Bible teaches us about a fourth dimension, and if you don't like that term, just call it the spirit realm. This is where resides principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what the fourth dimension or the spiritual realm is all about. Uh, some people speculate that this um, large uh, collider that they have in Europe uh, is supposed to open up some sort of portal into the other universe or the other dimension or whatever it is. Some speculate that this is NASA's blue beam that actually opened up a portal into this other dimension. Don't know yet. Don't have all the facts laid out yet. But apparently, according to this... When this event took place, they took President Barack H. Obama into what they're calling their secret 2012 Alice bunker. Remember, Alice went into a hole in the ground and entered into the fourth dimension. That's what that's all about. It's conspiracy theory right now. We look for evidence that will make it conspiracy fact. Here's something. Uh, several of you sent this to me. Big Sis invades Walmart. If you see something, say something. Department of Homeland Insecurity Secretary Janet Napolitano 
today announced the expansion of the department's national if you see something say something campaign to hundreds of walmart stores across the country launching a new partnership between department of homeland security and walmart to help the american public play an active role in ensuring the safety and security of our nation and basically what this is going to turn out to be is if you don't like the person is standing in line in front of you tell on them get them to into a lot of trouble it's the world we live in right now. I don't know how... Uh, <laughs> I'm remembering a song. You know I ought to do this and put it on our blog. It's a song about... It's a Christian song about standing in line at Walmart. I don't know if you've ever heard this song or not. Uh, there's nothing worse than standing in line at Walmart, especially at Christmas and Valentine's and all this stuff. Uh, and we get kind of upset with people. And if we don't like somebody in line, maybe I could tell Big Sis on her. You know how we are. Whereas when we're kids, we used to like to get our kids, our, our siblings in trouble. I'm telling mom. I'm telling mom on you. That's what this is setting up. We're setting ourselves up in this country. We're setting ourselves up in this country to go tell on everybody that we don't like, to turn them in. Already the uh, child abuse hotline is used in that way in this country. I don't know how it is anywhere else, but it's used that way in this country. You don't like somebody? Hotline them. Get them in big trouble. To tell the IRS things about them, all kinds of stuff. We know that stuff is going on. And now the Department of Homeland Security, big, big screen they're going to be putting at the checkout line with Janet Napolitano saying, if you see something, won't you come tell me? We'll launch an investigation into the person standing next to you. I know they're American citizens, but hey, they might be terrorists too. What a, what a world we live in. What a... Uh, let's move on. Um, you know what? Let's go to conspiracy fact. Let's, let's not talk about theory anymore. Let's go to fact. Isaiah chapter 14. I go to this a lot because when I talk about conspiracy theories, I like to talk about what the Bible says. And if you don't believe the Bible, you know, you've got a bigger problem than just believing, you know, whether we landed on the moon or not. Um, here is the one big, gigantic, great green gob of conspiracy fact. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? He fell from heaven, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, number one, I will ascend into heaven. Whoa. Hang on to that one. Number two, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Number three, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Number four. Number four. Remember four. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Number five, I will be like the most high. Now, there's a lot of things I've done, a lot of teachings on this. A lot of things could be said about it. But one of the interesting things that came across my desk this week was, uh, you know, Richard Branson. There's a private company out there called SpaceX. Chromosomes, okay? SpaceX, and uh, <clears throat> they are a private company space company. They've actually taken over the, the contract from NASA. NASA was sending uh, astronauts up to the space station in the, um, in the space shuttle. And NASA is going to scrap the space shuttle program, so we've got to have a way of getting the astronauts back and forth from the International Space Station. How are we going to do that? SpaceX's Dragon Capsule. First privately owned spaceship set to attempt launch into orbit. SpaceX has the contract, and so they built a rocket and a capsule on there that's going to have men in it, or women, and it's called the dragon. The dragon is the serpent. He's the devil. He is Satan. He is Lucifer. And that verse just came to mind when I saw this. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. It's like we're going to act out everything that's in the Bible right in front of your very eyes. And most people just absolutely won't get it. This world is going to be led. If we go to these verses again, um, he, was, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. When we look at Ezekiel chapter 28 and 2 Thessalonians 2, we know that he wants to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped by everybody, not just, not just pagan prisoners. Uh, pra pagan prisoners given time off to worship the sun god. 
You know, I just hate that they capitalize that S in there. I, I just hate that. Hundreds of criminals are to be given four days a year off prison work to celebrate pagan festivals. Prison governors have been issued with a list of eight annual pagan holidays and told pagan inmates can choose four to celebrate. The festivals include Imbolc, the festival of lactating sheep, which falls on February 1st and is dedicated to the goddess Brigid or Brigid. Another is the festival of Beltane. Uh, that's in May. You have the Yule festival, and of course you have the winter and the summer solstice. So now all the now all the pagan prisoners. Which let me say this: if you are a pagan or you are a sinner, you're already a prisoner. Okay. I think this falls under the category of Jesus saying, let the dead bury the dead. And you know what? If the prisoners in jail for robbery, um, murder, rape, you name it, if they're in there for that and they want to go worship the pagan sun god, let them worship the pagan sun god. I think, however, we could teach them about a different sun. Let me, uh, you know, this just came to my mind here. Let me open up my trusty King James Bible. <clears throat> and um, the Bible talks about the sun of righteousness arising with healing in his uh, verse in Malachi chapter four, verse two, but unto you that fear my name shall the sun capital S U N of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves um, uh, of the stall. The Bible teaches there's a difference. There's the earthly or the natural sun that we see and all the pagans worship that as the giver of life and rejuvenation and this and that and the other and it's a bunch of nonsense. The real sun, the real sun is not only the spiritual sun that lightens the earth lightens men's hearts, but it's the capital S-O-N of God himself. And he's not the son of iniquity. He's the son of righteousness. That's the son that I want to worship. That's the son that I believe in. That's the son that I want to arise in my heart to shine light upon my soul. Um... Here's an article here that uh, it just kind of kind of lets you know the days that we're living in. Uh, this is from World Net Daily University. Dump Christian beliefs on homosexuality or else demand student get re-educated and attend Pride event. Augusta State University graduate student Jen Keaton alleges school officials demand she be re-educated in morality, giving her the choice of giving up her Christian beliefs on homosexuality or being expelled from the school's counseling program. But now after three months of battling the university in court, a pair of free speech organizations have joined her in the fight. The Foundation of the Individual Rights and in Education and the National Association of Scholars have filed a friend of the court brief with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, asserting it a violation of the First Amendment for the Georgia University's officials to require Keaton's beliefs to be influenced by remedial sensitivity training or face expulsion. According to a complaint filed against the school earlier this year, school officials demanded Keaton, 24, go through a, quote, remediation program after she asserted homosexuality is a behavioral choice and not a state of being, as a professor said. Specifically, the remediation program was to include sensitivity training on homosexual issues, additional outside study on literature promoting homosexuality, and the plan that she attend a gay pride parade and report on it. Well, I can tell this young lady, if she goes to a gay pride parade, take a video camera. Some of the things that I've seen at these, at these things, some of the things that I've seen videotaped at these gay pride festivals would absolutely make you sick. This is a choice that people are making. People make choices all the time. Just because the fact that they choose sin does not mean that they're born that way. Yes, we're all born sinners, but we have a choice. And she's right. And she declares in her Christian beliefs, I don't know where she stands with the Lord. I don't know if she's just a philosophical Christian or a real born-again Christian. But you pray that this young lady will stand. Because it'll come to all of us one of these days whether or not we're going to stand for what's right in the last days or not. So, a portal opens up in space in Norway. And uh, President Barack Obama is uh, 
taken to the 2012 Alice Bunker, according to all the reports. Now, this whole WikiLeaks thing, and, and some people are you know, asking me, hey, what do you think about WikiLeaks? Uh, it's, you know, there's some people who are saying, he's a threat to national security. He should be thrown in jail, and we need to shut this down, and we need to stop this. Hang on. Um, those of us who believe that something's going on, something diabolical is going on. Um, you know, I've said this many times before. I don't need secret documents from the government, from Monsanto. Uh, I don't need a BP oil insider to tell me that something's going on. What I have is documents that are no longer secret. I have a King James Bible that tells me that something is going on. So I don't know anything about this Assange fella who is the head of the WikiLeaks Foundation and he's the one uh, leaking all this information. I don't know anything about him. Um, but I do know that there's a lot of people in government and in businesses and in different places all over the world that are kind of nervous they're they're kind of kind of nervous why are they nervous because apparently they have been doing things in secret they have been doing things behind people's backs you know they put up a big corporate smiley face like like walmart save money live better okay and oh by the way we're watching you don't make a false move. See, they, they make it sound really nice, okay? Kind of makes you wonder what sort of backdoor deal went on behind the scenes for Janet Napolitano, the big sis of America, um, to, um, to get cameras and to get warning signs placed all over Walmart's stores. What, what kind of deal went on here, okay? I guarantee you that Walmart didn't just say, hey, we're good Americans, we want to help. That's not what happened. Backdoor deals are done everywhere. In Congress, everywhere. In businesses, everywhere. The problem is, let me, let me illustrate here. This is uh, Morals and Dogma. This book would represent government inside secret classified meetings that they don't want anybody to know. And it doesn't have anything it doesn't have anything to do with national security. It doesn't have anything to do with telling the Iranians where all of our warships are. It has everything to do with a bunch of dirty politicians who want to gain power and money behind everybody's back and and the taxpayers paying for it. But they don't want you to find out that that's how they did it. It has to do with the United States of America and the power structure in America. Um not even trusting our own allies, not even trusting them, and having the NSA and the CIA spy and, and, and uh, intercept cables and wiretaps and everything like on people that are our allies. That's what it has to do with. They want to keep it secret. Albert Pike says this is, a, this is an esoteric book. Nobody, nobody can know what's inside of here. Okay? And yet God says, I reveal the deep and secret things. God said that there is nothing, nothing that is done in secret that shall not be brought to light. Nothing. So, what do I think of the WikiLeaks guy as a person? I don't know. What do I think about massive amounts of documents that are coming to the light of day that expose the fraud, the corruption, the backdoor deals? And everything like that, that when the if and when the public finds out about it, there would be a massive outcry. I think I'm in, I think I'm in favor of that. I, I really do. I think I'm in favor of that. Something that the conspiracy theorists have held for a while is that the government has inside information on UFOs. Now, here is one of the alleged stories from WikiLeaks. Apparently, WikiLeaks has another bundle of, of documents that they have sent out in, a, uh, in an encrypted package to all over the world. There's no way to stop this now. And it requires a 250-some-odd character code in order to break it. Not even the NSA can break it. Not even the military. So apparently, they have this out there, and they say, if, if anything happens to us, if anything happens to me, we're going to open the package. 
Okay, we're going to let it all out. And apparently, here's an article here, WikiLeaks, new diplomatic cables contain UFO details. Julian Assange says, new leaked diplomatic cables set to be published by WikiLeaks will contain fresh details and UFOs, according to the website's founder, Julian Assange. So, we don't know what's in the package. We don't know what details there is. We don't know what documents there are. But apparently, somebody knows something. Now, Pastor Mike, do, do you believe in UFOs? Yes, I believe that there are things that are flying in the sky that people have not identified. Do you believe in alien life forms? Yes, I do. you believe they live on other planets? No. I believe that they are evil angels. The Bible talks about that very specifically. They are, they are full of lying signs and wonders is what they are. They represent the familiar spirits that have been in contact with man, with governments. We know that Hitler was involved in it. We speculate that there were, that there were um, uh, areas of the United States government, the Majestic 12 and all this stuff. And I haven't really reported much on this, but I, I, I kind of know some things about it. Um, I, I, there's, I don't have a problem in the world believing that some of the technology that we have, that our military has or other areas in life have, is being directed toward mankind by aliens, by fallen angels, evil angels, the Bible calls them, in order to bring about a scenario where the world is going to, where the world is going to turn away from the Bible and turn toward worshiping Lucifer. That is what I believe according to the scriptures. So far, it's conspiracy theory. We'll wait to see what happens in the future. Here is something that we do know about. Cancun starts talk with a call to the gods while uh, with the United Nations climate negotiators facing an uphill battle to advance their goal of reducing emissions leaked to global warming. It's because global warming just isn't true. It's no surprise that the woman steering the talks appealed to a Mayan goddess Monday. Christina Figueres, executive secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. See, it's not global warming anymore. It's climate. They can't make up their mind. Invoke the ancient jaguar goddess in her opening statement to delegates gathered in Cancun, Mexico. Which, by the way, a cold front moved into Cancun. It's freezing them all out. They're having a global warming uh, meeting down there. Noting that Ixchel was not only goddess of the moon, but also the goddess of reason, creativity, and weaving. May she inspire you, because today you're gathered in Cancun, Cancun to weave together the elements, think about the wording here, of a solid response to climate change using both reason and creativity as your tools. She called for a balanced outcome, these are all code words by the way, which would marry financial and emissions commitments from industrialized countries aimed at combating climate change with, quote, the understanding of fairness that will guide long-term mitigation efforts. Um, you see the picture here. UN Climate Chief Christiana Figueres places a building block in a miniature Mayan pyramid at the site of the climate negotiations in Cancun, Mexico, Sunday, November 28, 2010. It's called the Pyramid of Hope Monument. It was erected by the Tick, Tick, Tick Climate Awareness Campaign. That's just a funny name. Climate Awareness Campaign to symbolize the many building blocks needed for a new climate agreement. Stop right there. They're, they're building a pyramid of hope. They're, they're, wanting to, they're wanting to change the world to please the mother goddess. Genesis 11. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said, listen to this. And they said one to another, go to, let us make us, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. That's exactly what they were doing here at the climate uh, seminar down in Cancun, Mexico. And they're, so they're praying to a goddess. And there's one big, gigantic, universal goddess. Uh, she was called the Jaguar goddess here. She's actually uh, Isis. Ashtaroth, Istar, Easter, um, Esther, Diana, um, Venus, you name her, that's who she is. And, and the book of Acts says the whole world worships her. Everybody does. They all worship the same goddess. It is the goddess, the spirit of this world, the, the feminine. Babylon the Great, the mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations to the earth, abominations of the earth, 
and and I and I spell this out in uh, this book, Capital Secrets, Lincoln Memorial. I talk about that in there. I uh, talk about Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon loves to build monuments. I mean, she builds monuments everywhere. Okay, so here they are building with these little looks like little Lego bricks is what it looks like, uh, but they're laying the bricks down, and these bricks represent people. They represent. Take a look at this. You remember we dealt with this on the Babel Conspiracy years ago. This was a poster for the European Union. Notice the Tower of Babel. Europe, many tongues, one voice. And I want you to notice that all the people that are helping to build this tower, rebuild this tower, they look like bricks. They do. Now I want to go back to this in Genesis 11. Um... It says in verse 3, in 11, 3, which is 33, And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And, and they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. You have to stop and think about it. What secret organization is founded upon a principle of people who build with bricks? They're called masons. Okay? Now, um, let me try to help you out here. There are... Masons that live in your neighborhood that go to the Masonic Lodge. Um, these are not the people on the inside, on the really, on the really, really deep inside that are planning all this stuff out. Um, most masonry that we have around us is just a group of guys that. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of things going on there, and I, I'm not going to say anything right now. But but there's an inner core. It's more than just the masonry that we see on the outside. Uh, when people, when there are people who are saying Osama bin Laden's a Mason, okay. Let me just let me just help you out here, and this is what some conspiracy theorists who are lost. This is something they can't handle, something they don't get. You know what it takes to be in the Illuminati? Do you know what it takes to be uh, a co-conspirator with the devil to enthrone Lucifer? You know what it takes? It takes being lost, is what it takes. If you're saved, you're not part of the conspiracy. If you're lost, you are. See how easy that is? Osama bin Laden doesn't have to be a Freemason to do what he's doing. Barack Obama, I have not seen any evidence. And people said, oh, Obama's a Mason. I haven't seen any evidence. There's nobody anywhere that has Barack Obama's name down as being a Mason. Okay? He doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. All he has to be is lost. And if you're watching this and you're lost... You're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. Okay? Conspiracy theory, conspiracy fact. Now, uh, a lot of study we did, and, and I bring this out in this book here, uh, in both of them actually, The Babel Conspiracy and uh, Capital Secrets Lincoln Memorial. I talk about this uh, because this Tower of Babel story has some numeric signatures into it. And the things that they say here in Genesis 11 add up to 46 words. The words that Lucifer spoke in the Garden of Eden was exactly 46 words. 46 chromosomes, things like that. So the theory that we've been putting out here, um, it's hinted at in the Aquarian Conspiracy with a little triple helix, three-strand DNA, is that um, there's going to be an, a change in man's DNA. Now, uh, a friend of mine in uh, Maryland, who actually put me on to the whole triple helix idea, um, sent me a couple articles this morning and said, Pastor Mike, uh, do what you can with it. Uh, this guy, Paul Schroeder, wrote an article, said, Human DNA as nanotech design, Darwin never met aliens. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but he is, he is going on about DNA, and he's saying it's very complex, it's very structured, it's very ordered, uh, it's written like a book, it, it, it actually has what looks like computer code in it, Okay, and uh, there's no way that it could have just evolved. And but his speculation is, is that since he doesn't believe in God, remember, if you're lost, you're part of the conspiracy. Okay, so his idea is that that DNA was programmed by aliens. Okay, it's called the space seed idea. And believe it or not, there's a lot of astronomers and scientists who actually believe this idea. It's called uh, what is it? Panspermia that says that there was some sort of alien life form out there that accidentally or purposely planted seed, the, the beginnings of, of life on Earth, on the Earth, you know, uh, 20 million, 100 million years ago, something like that. Uh, and it created... Now, the article says, his idea is, is that the aliens planted it on Earth 
and knew that it would be programmed to develop and evolve to such a point as to where we would understand where we really came from, then we would be able to go to the next level. You see, he says that he's on the good side, but he's not. Okay? Here's the other article that he sent to me that makes all this make sense. He says, aliens from another dimension, space, or demons from the Bible, post-abduction thoughts. Now, when you read this article, um, he, uh, let's see here. Let me, let me read this. Often when alien abductions do occur, the abducting entity places a screen memory in place, a te telepathically imposed vivid dream, or if one is attempting activity resistance, a nightmare replaces the actual abduction scenario before one's physical or astral face and mask any real collection. However, the, the imposed worst scenario dreams do reflect the inner nature of the creatures who are physically in charge. Each night after writing essays like this one, I have always received a slapping rebuke. Last night was no different. After writing and posting this, my night became emblazoned again with their unseen presences. This guy claims to be an abductee. Now, you know what an abductee is? Someone who's being harassed by demons. There was a movie come out, I think it was last year, called The Fourth Kind. And I saw some symbolism in it, but I'm watching this movie. And um, I'm seeing here that this whole alien thing, and I don't just believe it because of this movie. I believe it because of the Bible is actually demonic manifestations. Whitley Stryber, uh, the guy who wrote Communion, basically said the same thing. But Whitley Stryber is on the side of the aliens whom he had communion with. They abducted him and did all these tests that messed his brain up a little bit. This guy's brain is messed up. And he's putting out the idea that there is alien life. Okay? All right. That's conspiracy theory. That is some new ager that's being attacked and harassed by demons, and he's saying all this stuff. And everybody says, ah, it's no big deal. Okay? Big news this week, a couple things came out, um, was NASA. NASA funded research discovers life built with toxic chemical. Let me read the article. NASA funded astrobiology research has changed the fundamental knowledge of what comprises all known life on Earth. Researchers conducting tests in the harsh environment of Mono Lake in California have discovered the first known microorganism on Earth able to thrive and reproduce using the toxic chemical arsenic. The microorganism substitutes arsenic for phosphorus in its cell compounds. Now, NASA wants to take this idea and they want to project it out to say that it's possible that this little bacteria that they're looking at didn't originate here, that it came from some other source. Now, that's kind of what they want everybody to believe. <clears throat> or they want people to think that now we know that it is possible if conditions are not exactly the way they are here on Earth. They want people to believe that on other planets where the conditions are less desirable, that there could actually be life out there somewhere else. Pick your poison. Okay? You'll understand why I'm saying that here in a minute. Here's the interesting thing. Okay? What little bit I know about deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, is that you have the you have the two rungs of DNA, and um, they're joined together by the four base pairs. Now, these two rungs are made of two compounds. One is sugar, okay, because the book it's the book of God and it's sweet to the taste. I, I, I like that, okay. Uh, so one is sugar, and the other is phosphorus. Now, phosphorus gets its name because it has light attributes. It literally is. It, it glows. It has light. Now, think about this. this our DNA and the Bible are, are the same. Okay? So, the entrance, the entrance of thy words, the Bible says, uh, number one, is sweet to my taste. Number two, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It's all there, people. Okay? So, I want you to get this now. Now they're saying that there's life that exists without phosphorus, without light. The light, here we go, the light has been replaced by poison, arsenic. I don't know about you, but I haven't had any arsenic in my coffee lately. 
Um, that's, that's what they're saying. They're saying that this biological life form replaces the light. Oh, let's see here. What can I pick? Oh, oh, oh. Here's my new King James with a trichetra on it. It replaces the phosphorus with poison. Now, I'm not saying that I'm well versed on this, but um, there's a TV show called Forensic Files. And I was watching this one night late, and it describes about how these people get caught killing people. When you give somebody arsenic poisoning, of course, you can, you know, give it to them all at once and kill them dead. The best way to arsenic poison somebody with, with little detection is to give it to them in very tiny amounts, consistently over time. I hope I'm, hope I'm not putting ideas in your head. But they say, oh, you know, this is close to the King James. It's just got a little arsenic in it. Tiny amounts of it over time will kill you. It's killing our churches right now, okay? Are you, hang with me here. Because... <clears throat> I looked up the arsenic is an element, okay? It's on the periodic table of elements. Arsenic is listed as 33. Now, this is not an arbitrary listing that scientists come up with and said, oh, let's put that there and that there, okay? Um, this is its atomic number. It's an absolute. It's static. It, it's not arbitrary. This is what arsenic is. It is 33, the man of sin's number, okay? The son of perdition, sin, being a poison to us. And I want you to get this idea because this is where we're going. Now, a little bit more research I did. Arsenic is actually used in alchemy. What is alchemy, Pastor Mike? Alchemy is the religion um, that says that lead can be turned into gold. That's not really what it is. Uh, if you remember, a lot of the so-called um, Grand Masters of the Priory of Zion, they were alchemists. Okay? They believed in this secret doctrine. The secret doctrine is, is that man, lead, a base metal, can be turned into gold and immortal. Gold never, does, it never corrupts, it never fades. Okay? Um, so man can be turned into a god. Genesis chapter 3, the 46 words, that's what he promised Eve, is that she would become a god, okay, knowing good, or as the gods, knowing good and evil. Arsenic is used in this what's called transmutation process, transmuting lead into gold. Arsenic is used in this process. Here is the alchemical symbol for arsenic. Yeah. As above... So below. There's our friend Baphomet showing the as above, so below sign. And remember, on his right hand is written the word salve, which means to dissolve. One of the texts that I researched concerning arsenic called Hermes Unveiled. Notice the little DNA logo here. This is one of those 15th, 16th century books that's hard to come by. This author wrote concerning arsenic. He called it the chief central poison of the dragon, the universal dissolving nutriment, the chief, the chief poison, the poison of the dragon, and its number is 33. Think about it, okay? Here's what the Bible says, Deuteronomy 32, they shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction, that's salve, that is being dissolved. And I will also send the teeth of beast upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Deuteronomy 32, verse 32. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Think about how the homosexuals want to take over everything. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine, look at here. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Mystery Babylon holds in her hand a cup full of wine. It's poison. It's going to dissolve mankind. 
arsenic laced or whatever you want to call it. The poison of dragons. Psalm 58. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Psalm 140. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. James chapter 3 verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So here we have a life form that no longer exists by way of light. It exists by way of poison. I don't know where exactly this research that NASA came out with is headed. But it's awfully interesting to me. Let's be watchmen on the wall and watch over for them. And here's something. Speaking of the poison, here's something that, boy, I tell you what, any, any churchgoer ought to recognize this. Uh, I have for years, and I have, I've read um, C.S. Lewis. I have not read the Chronicles of Narnia, but I know a little bit about them. But I've read other things by C.S. Lewis. I read his space trilogy when I was in high school and college. And um, I've heard all my life, you know, C.S. Lewis was this great Christian philosopher, great Christian thinker, thought great thoughts about Christianity, said a couple things that I, I tend to agree with, okay? Um, I did a little background research into C.S. Lewis. Now, there's a movie coming out, I think it's the third part of the Narnia series called uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Um, Liam Neeson, one of the actors, I uh, read an article yesterday, Liam Neeson, one of the actors in this film, actually came out and said, what are you kidding? This line is not like solely based upon Jesus. This line is based upon a lot of other gods. And a lot of people said, oh, no, it's not, it's Jesus. Well, turns out Liam Neeson was right. And I'm going to show you that here in just a little bit. Um, the main character in this Narnia film, and then in the books, is, of course, a lion, Aslan. We have to determine whether or not this lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah or, or be sober, be vigilant for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion. Now think about this. The Bible says as a roaring lion. Jesus is a roaring lion in Isaiah. He's a roaring lion in Revelation 10. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. We, we know all that stuff. But the devil then masquerades as a roaring lion. So you have to decide, am I... Am I getting an allegory here of something that is the real Jesus or the fake one, the fake Jesus? Let's do a little background into Clive Staples Lewis. There you see him there with his coffee and his smokes. Um, Clive Staples Lewis was an atheist. Uh, didn't believe in God, didn't believe the Bible, didn't anything like that. Uh, near his death, however, he did believe in a God. He kind of believed some of the things out of the Bible. Does that make him a Christian? No, not according to the scriptures. It doesn't. Did he believe in a Jesus? Yes, he believed in a Jesus. Let me tell you the Jesus that he believed in. That's sort of given a, a generalized view of how C.S. Lewis went from an atheist to someone who believed in a God, okay, was that he went to, he was friends with the Roman Catholic brandy drinker J.R.R. Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien, who writes Lord of the Rings and all of this stuff, all of these, this myth, these fables, and uh, Gandalf the Wizard, and I read the Lord of the Rings series when I was in high school. Gandalf, of course, is, uh, is the gray wizard who dies and is brought up out of the pit and he lives again, and now he's the white wizard, but he's still a wizard. But everybody says, oh, he's Jesus. He's like Christ. You can see Christ in that. No, I can see another Jesus, though. So, C.S. Lewis does not believe in God. Tolkien, however, does, as a good Roman Catholic. Tolkien says, Lewis, come on over to the house. Um, we'll uh, drink some brandy and we'll smoke pipes. And let me tell you about how you can prove Jesus is real. So, they go over, to, they spend some time together. And uh, Tolkien begins to tell C.S. Lewis about Osiris and the uh, Norse god Woden and Apollo, and Bacchus, and Mithras. By the way, the character 
in Lord of the Rings, Gandalf the Grey Wizard, he was called Mithrandir. Mithras. Mithrandir. He changed the wording a little bit. It's the same, same God. All of these were emblems of the sun. Remember we talked about the pagans? Okay, They were emblems of the sun that were killed and rose again and became the savior of everybody. So without scripture, without believing the Bible, C.S. Lewis, it dawned on him, oh, okay, I believe in it. How did he come to believe in this Jesus that he believed in? Through myth, fable, and legend stories that were not true. That's how he came to believe in this Jesus thing. Okay, so anyway, um, the, the lion that C.S. Lewis teaches is that the real Jesus or the fake one. Here's what Manley Hall said in Secret Teachings. Candidates who successfully passed the Mithraic initiations were called lions and were marked upon their foreheads with the Egyptian cross. Mithras himself is often pictured with the head of a lion and two pairs of wings. Throughout the entire ritual were repeated references to the birth of Mithras as the sun god. His sacrifice for man, his death that men might have eternal life, and lastly his resurrection and the saving of all humanity. He goes on later to say, Through the mystic passageways and chambers of the Great Pyramid, past the Illumin of antiquity, they entered its portals as men, they came forth as gods. It was the place of the second birth. The womb of the mysteries and wisdom dwelt in it as God dwells in the hearts of men. Somewhere in the depths of its recesses, there resided an unknown being who was called the initiator or the illustrious one, robed in blue and gold and bearing in his hand the sevenfold key of eternity. This was the lion-faced hierophant, the holy one, the master of masters. Now, do you remember who the hierophant is? The, hier the hierophant is the priest who brings all the ignorant people into and initiates them into the mystery religions. This hierophant here was a lion. Pastor Mike, uh, maybe, maybe this lion is Jesus. Okay, Maybe it is. And maybe this will reach people for Jesus. Here's what the Bible says. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. And as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. The apostle Paul said, if they teach fables... It's not the real God. Stop and think about this for a minute. Okay? Here I'm going to try to teach the truth of the ages. Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to do it by way of something that's not true. Do you see the clash here? Do you see the opposites? Oh, well, the new paradigm is to fuse the opposites. This is not true, but this is true. And we're going to find the real truth, the new truth, by fusing these two together. You see how it works? Okay? Yin and yang, square and compass, uh, as above, so below. Sons of God, daughters of men. They're all fusing together here. Truth and fable. Uh, we talked about uh, creation here a while back. Uh, creation, and there's theistic evolution, which is an attempt to make the Bible jam into evolution. It doesn't work. They're separate. They're opposite ideas. Okay? Male and female, bafflement. Um, and so this, this Jesus that... That Tolkien and Lewis, they allegorize about in their books, supposedly, is not the Jesus who is all truth all the time. Some, and somebody asked me, what about the parables? They were true stories. Jesus never said, let's, let's imagine that there was this guy that went to hell. That's not what he said. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man. He didn't make the story up. I think Jesus knew this man knew who he was. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach the word. Preach the word. Didn't say preach Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Didn't say have a special showing in your church with this and for uh, $250 we'll send you a program packet that you can lead people to real Jesus by watching C.S. Lewis movies and Lord of the Rings and even Harry Potter. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke, 
exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into what? Fables. Second Peter chapter one, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Peter said, when I got saved, I didn't get saved because I heard about a story about Mithras and Bacchus and Apollyon and, and uh, Osiris and, uh, and Tammuz. That's not how I got saved. I didn't follow the cunningly devised fables. He said, if we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Then he says, three verses later, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Okay? So you got a choice here. Let me, uh, here we go. Novel, fiction, okay, allegory. Here's Dan Brown, the lost symbol, and here's the word of God. Okay? They both look like lions. They both do. One of them's the real one. One of them's the fake one. You know how easy it is to tell which one's true. Which one is based upon the truth. A lot of people you know are going to say, oh, this is, oh, this is Jesus, all that. Yeah, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, he's Jesus. Yeah, he's a wizard, but he's Jesus. Jesus the wizard. Gandalf the gray, Gandalf the white. He's a wizard, but he's Jesus because he dies and rises again. Well, the beast, the lion-faced hierophant, is down in a pit right now waiting to initiate mankind to follow after a different kind of roaring lion. Um... Talk about our watchers list. You want to get on our watchers list? You get all of our Watchmen video broadcasts, DVDs, anything that you want. We'll send it to you on a monthly basis. All we ask is uh, some kind of donation of any amount to help us out with our cost. Uh, we have some books here. I've kind of been talking about them here. The King James Code, Scripture Numerics, and Bible Prophecy by Divine Order. They the one. This one comes first, and then this one. Uh, that's how I wrote them. And we talked about earlier about the Babel conspiracy. There's a video that goes with this. My wife talks about, don't you hate those people who really don't hate anybody? Don't you dislike those people who say, hey, want to go with? Anyway. Uh, and then Capital Secrets, the Lincoln Memorial. There's a video that goes with this as well, full color. And uh, again, never charge anything for our material. And if you get our DVDs and you copy them, don't feel bad. Because I just talked to a guy this morning and said uh, he needs more copies because he's trying to copy them. And I said, praise the Lord for it. That's what we want you to do. We never charge anything for it, but somebody has to pay for it. We're still just a small church down here in Jefferson County, Missouri. Uh, these people love the Lord, and they're excited about what God's doing. And if you can help us out, we would certainly uh, appreciate it. This is Pastor Mike. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.